Today on BRS TV, we have an episode on LED aquarium lighting. LED fixtures designed as a primary light source for reef tanks have been around for a while now and seemingly in a constant state of progression. General LED technology is rapidly improving and becoming more affordable at the same time. There have been some fairly major gains in the last couple of years, which have made LEDs a much more attractive option to the average reefer. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the benefits of LED lighting, what to look for when selecting a fixture, and how we can use LED lighting to emulate the sun and reef environment as close as possible. I'd like to start this video by stating that LED lighting has really come a long way, and while it's out of its infancy, the technology is still developing. I think we are in the young adult years where some of the early entries to the market have a fairly developed product now, and many reefers are starting to show multiple years of success using a variety of different fixtures. The industry is beginning to see a steady stream of new entries to the market every day. However, one fixture is not the same as the next, and which one is the best continues to be a hotly debated topic. At this point, I don't think there's really a single best option because everyone's requirements and budgets are so different. I think the best option is to look for advice from a like-minded individual you trust who has had at least one year of success using the light you are considering. Beyond that, in this video, we're going to discuss the many different elements to look for in a new LED system. Using this information, it should be easier to determine which of these elements are important to you and select an LED fixture in the price range you are shooting for. First, I think we should hit on what makes LED lighting so attractive to begin with. LED lighting has a plethora of attractions to the average aquarium owner. I think one of the attractions most reefers will notice immediately is the ability to adjust the color spectrum to their liking. While this is certainly possible with halides and fluorescent lighting, it means constantly changing the bulbs until you find the ones you like which is not only expensive, but a pain in the butt. Most LED options these days allow for adjustment of the color spectrum with the push of a button or easy to use slider bars. The net result of this is the ability to adjust the color spectrum to exactly what you like. Some of us like blue, some purple, and some like a sharp white look. The only limitation is the type of LEDs included with the fixture and programming options. They also allow for easy adjustment of intensity which is nice when you're trying to find that perfect window of par intensity for a variety of different coral species. In fact, many modular units allow you to create different intensities for different portions of the tank, which can be difficult to notice visually, but help create ideal environments for different corals. On top of that, many of them allow for completely different colors at different points of the day, like dusk to dawn effects. Some people may choose to have different color for dawn than dusk, so they can experience the tank differently throughout the day. LEDs are also dimmable, so it is easy to adjust the intensity gradually throughout the day, which is not only cool, but I think it is good for the tank inhabitants. In fact, no other type of aquarium lighting can really come close to the flexibility and programming options many of the LED fixtures have. LEDs also produce significantly less heat than most other aquarium lighting options, which typically means there is no need for a chiller. Chillers are expensive, can be noisy, and fairly bulky. I don't think I know anyone who is excited about adding a chiller to their system, unless they absolutely have to. Most of the LED options are also fairly low profile and attractive, which makes them easy to install on basically any tank. Honestly, I think this is one of the most overlooked features on lighting systems in general. All the focus is on what's inside the tank, but I think the tank itself is really going to play just as big of a role on the visual appeal in the room, and most likely how happy our spouses are with our hobby. If you ever want to upgrade, it's pretty critical they like the one that's currently in the house. Last but not least, most LED options have a significantly lower cost of ownership than halides and even some fluorescent options because they consume way less energy. Most installations don't require a chiller, and most importantly, they don't require hundreds of dollars worth of bulbs a year. It is a lot easier to look at the initial purchase price, but I think it's much more reasonable to look at the three or five year cost of ownership. Knowing this will often justify the purchase you really want, while saving real dollars at the same time. Now that we have a general idea of why LED lighting is becoming so popular, we're going to hit on some differentiators and things to look at when making a purchase. The first thing most people consider is the PAR output, which is representative of how intense the light is. While this is important, it's probably not the most important thing to consider. The thing is, a vast majority of good LED fixtures out there these days provide way more PAR than you will ever need. In fact, it is really common to intentionally reduce the output with many LED fixtures because they produce way too much light. For instance, we have been running the Illumina 360 on this tank for a few months and ultimately had to turn down the unit to 40% output to get the PAR numbers we were looking for where everything seemed to thrive. 
It's important to remember, par is not horsepower, or more is always better. In fact, too much light is way more likely to kill corals than not enough. I think the continual discussions and focus on par are really left over from a time where many lighting options didn't have enough par, but these days, that really isn't the case. One of the first things I look at is the cost per LED, especially if the models I'm looking at are using the same brand and quality of LEDs. This can range from $10 to $30 per LED. Within that range, you will find various features, programming options, and component qualities. It is important to note that cost per LED doesn't tell the complete story because there are different quality LEDs. LEDs come in different brands, models, and bins. The binning is one of the more interesting aspects. As the LEDs are manufactured, they come out with pretty large variances in light output, color, and efficiencies. The manufacturer will test them and sort them into different bins, with the higher light output bins obviously being significantly more expensive. That said, most of the aquarium light manufacturers don't state the binning information of the LEDs used for a variety of reasons. Even though a handful of manufacturers do post the binning data in the product documentation, it is difficult to really compare to other brands because so few do. That said, I think it is fair to assume in many cases, the manufacturers that are willing to share this information probably are using better bins than most, and transparency is always a trust builder. Fixtures also come in a wide array of programming options. Simple fixtures like the Tesla and MaxSpec Razor have all the programming options on the unit itself. More or less, you can set it to slowly ramp the lights up and down at different times of the day. It's pretty easy, and for the most part, it's all many people really need or want. There are also options which are considerably more advanced, which allow way more control over the system. Most of them require you to connect to a computer either directly or wirelessly to use the interface. These systems allow you to adjust the color to precisely what you are looking for with a simple slider bar. They also make it easy to emulate natural intensity changes as the sun crosses the sky. Many of them simulate natural lunar cycles, cloud effects, and even lightning during storms, which can be a neat effect to watch. It's really impressive to see all of the options these manufacturers are coming up with. Available color spectrum is another thing important to most people. It's fairly typical for basically every fixture to have some variation of white, blue, and royal blue LEDs. However, it has become increasingly popular to add additional colors like red, green, purple, or UV. Honestly, for me, I think the more options, the better. I always end up using all of them to achieve the exact color I like, and the different spectrums are suspected to be beneficial to corals. Longevity is also important when purchasing an expensive product like this. A lifespan of 10 years or over 50,000 hours is commonly thrown around. However, numbers like this are developed by LED manufacturers and not the aquarium fixture manufacturer. This estimate is developed based on lab conditions. Basically, none of these LEDs have even been in existence for 10 years or 50,000 hours. The best way we can try and achieve this type of lifespan is to keep the LEDs cool. Heat is the number one enemy of LEDs. Excess heat will drastically reduce the lifespan of the LED and likely affect the color spectrum emitted as well. There are two basic ways to cool LEDs. The first is relatively small heat sink, which utilizes fans to quickly dissipate the heat, and large heat sinks that work largely in a passive function, even though some may still use fans. The smaller fan-driven heat sinks are nice because it allows the system itself to be fairly small and modular. However, they do typically make some noise and you are heavily relying on moving parts. If the fan fails, the light is going to get hot fast. Some fixtures do have safety mechanisms that will turn the light off in this case to prevent overheating and serious damage. The larger models that function primarily as a passive heat sink are obviously much larger, but the fans are low volume and generally operate absolutely silent without reliance on moving parts. There are some models that will actually display the operating temp of the LEDs themselves, which gives peace of mind that they are truly operating in an acceptable range. This isn't a super common feature and something I would personally like to see from some of the high-end models out there. Another thing to consider is how the light enters the tank. It has become fairly common to use lenses to focus the light into the tank. The lenses vary from fairly focused to pretty wide-angled, but the concept is generally the same. They are designed either to increase the overall PAR levels for the entire tank or increase PAR levels at the bottom. The TIR lens Ecotech incorporated into their fixture increased peak PAR as much as 45% and overall PAR up to 23% without a big impact on spread. There are some models out there like the Tesla and Illumina that have strayed away from the use of lenses. There is absolutely less light entering the tank without the lenses and the resulting maximum PAR will be lower. However, most people still end up turning them down anyway. 
Implementing the LEDs without lenses seems to result in a very even color blending and power intensity in the entire tank. Most people report the shimmer produced is similar to halides as well, without the disco ball effect many other LEDs produce when there's too much surface water movement. The last thing to consider is upgradability. LED technology is constantly changing. If this thing is really going to last me 10 years, I'd like the fixture to be able to change with the times if possible. Many of the higher end models do have a variety of upgrade possibilities, ranging from the ability to change the entire LED pad to adding auxiliary pads with new colors as they are developed. In a previous episode of our lighting series, we discussed the different types of light available to corals in the natural reef environment. These included intense directional light from the sun, diffuse light from the sky, pulses of focus intense light provided by the shimmer lines, and light reflected back up from the substrate like rock and sand. To give an example of exactly how flexible and cool LED lighting can be, we're going to show you the lighting program we have been running on this tank and how closely it can emulate light intensity patterns found in the natural reef environment. We have this fixture on a 12 hour light cycle to simulate longer photo periods found in many reef locations. The first three hours are designed to emulate the effect of the sun rising over the horizon where there's little directional light from the sun hitting the reef and most of the light is diffused light from the sky. To achieve that, we slowly ramp up the entire tank with a slightly bluer hue during the first three hours. For the next six hours, we would like to simulate the intense directional light coming from the sun that happens from late morning to early afternoon. To do that, we're going to increase the intensity of the light, but not on the whole tank. Instead, it starts on the left-hand side of the tank. You can notice it gets significantly brighter from the left to the right until all the lights are elevated to emulate midday. Then shortly after, the left side begins to dim to emulate the different angle the sun would be hitting that side of the rock in the late afternoon. At the completion of the six hour sun cycle, the next three hours are again the sky illumination, which slowly ramps down until sunset. Because the LEDs are intense single points of light themselves, they also provide shimmer lines and intense pulses of focus lights as well. The net result is this really cool effect and ultimately an environment where this tank seems to be thriving in. Typically, we wouldn't suggest a 12-hour lighting period with most lighting systems, but implemented like this, the light isn't extremely intense for much of the day. One of the nice side effects of the 12-hour light cycle is the tank is on in the morning before most people go to work, as well as when they get home, so there's more time to enjoy the tank. That wraps up today's episode. If you would like to be notified when we release new episodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit BulkReefSupply.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.